Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, Nicholas Barclay, and South Pole Murder Mystery. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the mysterious disappearance of a 13-year-old boy and the one and only unsolved murder ever in the South Pole. Get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos. Number 1. Nicholas Barclay Nicholas Barclay of San Antonio, Texas was already a thug by 13 years old. He frequently cursed and was abusive towards his mother Beverly and often got into trouble whenever he showed up at school. At such a young age, he already had a juvenile record that included charges for stealing a pair of shoes, threatening his teachers, and breaking into a convenience store. To match his behavior, he even sported three legal tattoos etched into his skin. So when one day the young boy vanished, not many people took it seriously. It was June 13, 1994, when Nicholas headed out to play basketball with friends at a nearby park, just a mile or so away from his house. After they were done, he called his mom and asked to be picked up, but his mother worked nights and spent the days sleeping. His brother Jason answered the phone call but refused to wake his mother. He then told Nicholas he would need to walk, but he never made it home and that was the last time anybody saw him again. When his family reported him missing, the police weren't so worried. After all, Nicholas had disappeared several times before but would always come back within a day or two. On top of that, he had a court hearing on June 14th where it would be decided if he should stay with his family or go into a rehab home for juveniles. He wasn't too happy with this and police speculated it was possible he left to avoid the hearing altogether. But it was soon clear the teen's disappearance was a serious matter. Police realized that Nicholas only had $5 in his pocket when he went missing he had a backpack but didn't bring any clothes. His mother told police she believed he may have accepted a ride from a stranger and was taken. Three months after he disappeared, Jason, his older brother, called police saying he saw his brother trying to break into the garage. But when police got there, Jason said Nicholas had run off. Even though authorities scoured the neighborhood, they couldn't find any sign of the boy. Police believe Jason lied about seeing his brother and that he was never there at all. Nicholas's case then went quiet. There were no leads or suspects, and at this point, police had no idea what had happened to him. Three years passed, and then in October of 1997, San Antonio police received a call from a young man in a shelter in Linares, Spain. He claimed to have found Nicholas Barclay alive and said that Nicholas escaped from a child sex ring operation. Nicholas had apparently been abused for three years but survived although lost a bit of his memory. He was able to speak French now and also knew bits of other languages. Nicholas's sister, Carrie, immediately flew out to Spain to identify him. Initially, Nicholas was hesitant to meet his sister, but when she saw him, she confirmed it was her brother. She started showing him pictures of their family, explaining who each person was, urging him to remember each one in the photo. Then slowly, his memory began returning. Once he got home, the family welcomed him back with open arms, but they did have lingering questions like how Nicholas's eyes had turned from a striking blue to a brown, or how his complexion had changed. He answered and told them that the sex ring had chemically dyed his hair, eyes, and skin to make sure he didn't look the same as before. Even those in law enforcement and private investigators were curious as to how different this person looked. One investigator even compared Nicholas's ears to photos of what they used to be and they didn't look the same. Ears are much like fingerprints. No two humans have the same shape. After plenty of suspicion and arguments within the family members about Nicholas's identity, a court issued for fingerprints and DNA tests to be done. Finally, it was revealed Nicholas Barclay wasn't really Nicholas at all, but instead 23-year-old French native Frédéric Borden. Borden was a professional identity thief and Nicholas's identity was the most recent he had taken up. It's believed he had taken as many as 500 identities prior to this and was wanted by Interpol. The story about the sex ring was also untrue. He spread it so his story would be more believable. But what happened next 
came as a surprise. Despite the family being told the person they thought was Nicholas was an imposter, they actually wanted to keep him as Nicholas. Police were baffled by this action and suspicion then grew on the family. As for Borden, he was eventually arrested for identity theft and causing grievance to the family. He said even though he didn't spend a long time in the home, he knew something was off with how the family treated him. Perhaps they were grieving so bad that they just wanted to believe the young man was their son and convinced themselves that it was true. But the burden lay heavy and eventually Frederic called police himself and told them Nicholas was likely murdered. Borden shared that while in the home he felt as if everyone knew he wasn't Nicholas at all and yet they kept insisting and wanting him to play the role. He found it unusual too that when Carrie first met him she knew he wasn't Nicholas and yet she confirmed him as her brother. She then went on to tell him about their family members, showing photographs, almost drilling the information into him to aid in his charade. While with the family, he said he met Jason, Nicholas's older brother. Borden said Jason never pretended he was Nicholas, and when Jason left home, he just told him, good luck. For Borden, he felt everybody knew he was an imposter, and he believed someone from the family had killed the real Nicholas, and some of the members knew about it. Police remembered the suspicious call Jason made stating he saw his brother alive. They said it was the kind of thing criminals did just to make someone believe the victim was still alive. But before Jason could be questioned, he died from a drug overdose. Borden ended up spending six years in prison for his crime, and although his theory about the family and what really happened to the real Nicholas seems intriguing, there's no solid proof pointing to a clear suspect. Today, Nicholas Barclay remains missing. Even though he's classified as a runaway, police believe he may have met foul play all those years ago. Number 2. South Pole Murder Mystery For six months a year, it's total darkness in the South Pole. While most people wouldn't voluntarily live in such a desolate place, for Australian scientist Rodney Marks, it was a good opportunity. In 2000, at 32 years old, Mark seemed to have a blossoming career when he was assigned to work on the Antarctic Submillimeter Telescope and Remote Observatory. The Amundsen Scott South Pole Station was run by the U.S. National Science Foundation and the U.S. contractor Raytheon Polar Services. It is the only continually inhabited area in the South Pole, but of course, living there does come with risks. First, there is the extreme isolation. Most workers are stuck there for months at a time with little to do. If there are emergencies, medical support isn't immediately accessible. Despite having good medical facilities, it's still a big gamble. Then there's the weather. Workers and staff are at the mercy of extreme cold and the perpetual darkness. Even though Marx agreed to living in such bad conditions, at least he had the company of his fiancée, Sonia Walker. She took up the job of a maintenance specialist in order to stay close to him during the trying months down there. But then on May 11, 2000, medical staff at the base were alarmed when Marks returned to their clinic three times in a span of 36 hours. He said he felt sick and ended up vomiting blood after returning from the remote observatory and back to the main base. The station doctor, Robert Thompson, tried to help him but was baffled by his symptoms Mark complained of stomach pain, fever, and nausea. Despite trying, Rodney Marks eventually succumbed to his mysterious illness. He died soon after, first reporting his condition. The National Science Foundation, or NSF, announced Marks had died from natural causes and ordered his body to be flown out of Antarctica so an autopsy could be conducted to find out what exactly happened. But because of the bad weather, Marx's body remained in Antarctica for six months inside a freezer. When he was finally flown out and brought to New Zealand, authorities there found a shocking reason for Marx's death. They discovered he had died from acute methanol poisoning. New Zealand police then took over the jurisdiction of the investigation and began working out what happened to the young scientist and how he was poisoned. The only problem, though, is that when they began their investigation, they were hit by a wall of silence. The NSF refused to cooperate with authorities, along with the Raytheon Polar Services. Officers said the companies wouldn't even comply with their request for information, 
including a list of the staff that was with Marks at the time of his death. When police eventually obtained a list of workers, there were only 49 employees present, and once they attempted to ask for the workers' cooperation, only 13 out of the 49 agreed. New Zealand detectives believe there's much more to the case. They also think the NSF might have done their own investigation but simply refused to share what they found out with the New Zealand police. There are countless theories as to what might have happened to Rodney. One states that he may have drunk the methanol accidentally, not knowing what it was during a drinking binge. It's known Marks had a drinking problem. It was also his way of hiding his Tourette's. Drinking is a common problem in Antarctica because of the isolation. Another theory for his death was that it was a form of suicide, that he drank the methanol to kill himself. But many who knew and worked with him dispute this. They say he was well-liked and formed plenty of close relationships at the base. At the same time, police said he was finishing up a piece of academic work at the time of his death. Even more curious with Rodney's case is that the autopsy revealed he had track marks on his arms but was not known to use drugs. In fact, his system was cleared during autopsy. Curiously, the doctor from the base, Robert Thompson, has been missing since 2006 as well and no one knows where he is. Many of Rodney's family, including his father, believe his case will never be solved. His father said because of the situation it was going to be a fruitless exercise to try and find out more about what happened. Rodney Marks' death is the only unsolved murder to ever occur on the continent of Antarctica. So they are with two of the most strange and mysterious stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted Twos is sure to show you why. If you enjoyed this video then please remember to subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday that we know you want to see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.